Hello and welcome to the show. I am here on Forza 6 with another autocross car build. My vehicle today is the Range Rover Sport SVR, one of the new cars from the latest DLC pack and not exactly the first vehicle you think of when you think autocross. However, I am curious to see how this one will do because the Jeep Wagoneer has gone very, very quickly when it came to it still sits in 12th on our leaderboard that is not a car that you expect to go well around an autocross course and this uh, Range Rover is supposed to be a half decent handling vehicle so perhaps we can have another surprise on our hands or it could drive quite a lot like the bowler and want to be on two wheels for most of the course that is another big fear with uh, with this vehicle now it does start off uh, right at the top of C-Class, the first thing we're going to want to be doing is tyres. We're going to want some nice race tyres that jumps the PI up massively on here. And we're going to go for some full tyre widths, 325s on the front. It has pretty damn decent sized ones to start with, but 325s uh, on the front, I'm assuming we'll have the same on the rear because it's four wheel drive. Indeed we will. 325s all round is uh, not too bad. Not too bad at all on the vehicle. Uh, there is plenty of power in the uh, Range Rover, certainly 550 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds of torque. It's quite heavy though, and that is a little bit of a concern. So the next thing we're gonna do is a weight reduction. Hopefully, now well, we got 1,100 pounds out of it. It does still weigh 4,000 pounds. That is a, a, a lot of weight. It's up there with quite a Tesla Tesla weight, uh, it's far heavier, I say it's far heavier, it's about 600 pounds heavier than the Jeep Grand Wagoneer and a fair bit heavier than the Camaro as well. We're going to want some race brakes and race suspension. That jumped the PI up massively, <laughs> suspension. We're going to want it though uh, on this vehicle. Uh, I, mm, I can't decide whether I want a roll cage. I think it probably is a better... <sighs> A good idea to put the roll cage. While the chassis in this is not bad, certainly, anything that we can do to uh, help it through the corners. I know it's going to add some weight, but I think we're going to want the handling, basically. We can perhaps get some of that weight off as well with some um, other upgrades. We're going to be wanting downforce parts, most definitely. Again, anything that can possibly... Oh, look at the wing! Ha-ha! <laughs> The mighty return of the double wings. You don't see them so often on Forza. Forza 4 had huge amounts of them on like hatchbacks and so on. Um, but uh, there we go. That is a... Uh... <laughs> oh, it is a glorious wing. All right. We've not got much PI to uh, to play around with uh, here. We are going to want to put the diff on the vehicle. Now, I'm hoping... I don't actually know what... Can we do any engine swaps? I'm guessing... Oh, we can. What can we? Oh, we can put the V12 in it. Okay, so we can have lots of power, potentially, in the Range Rover, but not for this, because it won't keep it in A-Class, so we will have to stay with the standard engine now. Exhaust, please save me some weight. Hey, it's £50, it'll do. I will I will take that. The vehicle is supercharged from standard. Can we? No, nope, we can't get the supercharger. We can't get a, a weight-saving supercharger. Sometimes upgraded superchargers can save a little bit of weight. That is sadly not the case here. Uh, I'm hoping. I mean, we are going to be getting, you know, high power figures. I was kind of hoping to get it under four, four thousand pounds. I don't really think it's going to be the case. And I'd rather do these than do uh, ooh, the uh, kind of like the gearbox and so on. I will come back to uh, probably a drive line to finish this vehicle off. Oh, and the drive line can save a fair amount of weight. Yeah, it can. <laughs> with these uh, large four-wheel drive cars, that saves a huge amount of weight with the uh, top-tier ones. Can't fit it in the PI, though, so we will go for the uh, the street drive line. 590 horsepower, that's a lot of power and a lot of torque to move around the uh, large bulk of the Land Rover. I don't really have fears about this car when it comes to acceleration at all. It's whether we're going to have the grip to move this much Range Rover through the tight, twisty sections on the autocross course. So, of course, to test out the Range Rover, we have come to the Hockenheim circuit, where it will get three runs through the autocross course. Our current leader is the Renault 5 Turbo with a time of 205.2, and I would be astounded if the Range Rover couldn't well, really get anywhere near that. 
The Jeep Grand Wagoneer has a time of 206.9, and that is a stupendously fast time for a car around here, especially for that sort of a vehicle. Maybe that is a, a target for the Range Rover. I, I really have no idea how well this is going to, going to handle. We do know that the Jeep is pretty much powered by witchcraft to be able to get around the course as well as it goes, so we will have to wait and see and, and see how this uh, Range Rover fares. If we have got as good a front-end grip as we had in the Wagoneer, it's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad at all through that uh, first gate. How are the brakes? Yeah, brakes do a pretty damn good job of uh, slowing down a mighty Range Rover. The acceleration is quick, not quite as fast as we have seen. That is a really good change of direction through there. The back, if anything, the back end is actually a little bit... Oh, I'm pushing my luck through there. Yeah, if anything, the back end is a little bit... Um, too oversteery. This is a little too loose for perhaps some of these. I don't quite have the the same confidence in this as I have in some other four-wheel drive cars. I'm impressed though. I am very impressed actually with the way the front end of this gets turning. That is flat out through there. <laughs> it's absolutely flat out. And we've had a few cars have some issues going flat out and a few sensible cars at that have issues going flat out through there. Admittedly, it is perhaps slightly slower than them cars, but not by much, and you've got to bear in mind there is 4,000 pounds of Land Rover to try and change direction. That's some, some good going, about 114 miles an hour it uh, topped out at. I, uh, this is in impressive. This is very impressive from the Range Rover. I don't think it's quite up there with the Wagoneer. I think perhaps the rear end might let the car down ever so slightly. But, um, yeah, considering it is a damn sight heavier and larger than that uh, Wagoneer, this does an incredible job. It really does. I, mean, I said about that the Camaro didn't feel like a... Ooh, I bugger that one there up completely. Uh, the, the Camaro Z28 didn't feel like a, a, a relatively large, heavy muscle car. Um, this is much larger, uh, considerably heavier, <laughs> and it actually drives really well. Uh, this is, yeah, some... Uh, this is a, yeah, I'm... Not quite sure that. <laughs> quite sure what to say about the Land Rover. Can we do this uh, final wiggle towards the line? It's not as quick as the Renault 5, certainly. Through there, the actual lap time was not particularly amazing. A 2:14.6. Uh, I don't think I clipped any badges. Apparently, I got a Porsche test driver badge for driving a Range Rover. Sure, game. Well done. Uh, yeah, the first time was not particularly amazing, but the actual, uh, the way the car drove, pretty, yeah, pretty spectacular. So, on to the second run for the Range Rover. I'm not sure, I don't think I clipped a gate on that previous run. It is possible, though, that uh, that I could have uh, missed it. It certainly felt a damn sight faster than, uh, than a 2.14. One of the things that uh, might possibly happen with the, ooh, okay, cold rear tyres. Cold rear tyres are not fun. <laughs> <laughs> that is some big, yeah, that is some kind of big oversteery, scary moments from the back of this car. Now, cold rear tyres are not normally a, a thing that you have a problem with, except for in the front wheel drive cars. But this is, uh, yeah, that is a really, really, really wiggly rear end. So we've definitely got to be, uh, be watching out all for that one. Uh, what I was going to say before I got uh, terrified by the car is that, um, oh, have I just <laughs> somehow I've got away with uh, getting through all of that. Um, I'm losing my train of thought trying to keep a Range Rover on uh, an autocross course. I think one thing that might, oh, <laughs> uh oh, we've, we've lost it big time. Oh, I've got a twitch going on. I'm going to save it through that gate there, but only just. Uh, <laughs> I'll eventually finish my sentence, what I was trying to say. Uh, is that while this has got some decent power, decent torque, and certainly, you know, we've got the four-wheel drive traction, it isn't the fastest accelerating that we have had, and I do wonder if potentially out of some of these slower gates, if it may struggle a little bit. It doesn't feel like it is, particularly. It really doesn't feel like it's struggling that much out of here. These gear ratios are actually pretty damn short from standard. Right, oh, no, don't change direction too soon. Yeah, it's easy flat out through there. 
You've got to make sure the first of the high speed changes, you've got to make sure that you've got it uh, lined up properly, otherwise you'll get a, a wiggle on like you saw I uh, managed to do this time around. If you can, uh, yeah, if you can not do that though, it's it's got remarkable remarkable grip. You have really got to watch out though for the for the rear end. It can get away from you ever so slightly. That's a strange thing to be saying about this car <laughs> of all of all of the vehicles. Um, yeah, a four-wheel drive Land Rover. I would not expect to be highly oversteering, but there we go. Right, it is uh, slow it down for this uh, final section. Yeah, I knew this wasn't going to be a particularly particularly good run there was one gate clipped and a little bit of time would have been lost from the uh, kind of recovering from that big slide but uh, hmm it feels a lot faster than it is I I have a sneaking suspicion unfortunately on to the final run for the uh, Range Rover I'm hoping I can find some time I'm really hoping I can find some time on this one because feels like a good car to drive, it feels like a... I wouldn't quite go as far as to say a sports car, but it does handle very, very well. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping I can set you know, set a decent time with this one. Yeah, okay, it's not quite as, as agile as the Renault 5 or the Porsche and so on that are towards the top of this table, but that's not exactly surprising. For what it is, I am incredibly impressed with this uh, with this vehicle all right let's get it through these uh, these early gates I think the trick is perhaps not going to be don't chuck it about too much through here uh, just don't let the rear <laughs> the rear get too excited and we might be able to do okay I mean, that sort of 70 miles an hour through there is not bad going whatsoever for a Range Rover with a little bit of understeer out wide yeah it's about 114 miles an hour. It's a little bit down on some of the very fastest vehicles. We've seen about 120 from uh, from some cars. Ooh, we, we, we ran out of grip for that section ever so slightly. We did start uh, sliding across the road. Slow it down for here. Uh, it's this section up here actually that I'm most impressed by the way it does that change of direction that is a sl very slow speed change of direction and for such a big Range Rover so much car changing direction as well as it does there is I think pretty damn impressive and the uh, grip roll that I feared that you can sometimes get with these kind of vehicles not a problem at all no sign of grip roll it hasn't wanted to go up on two wheels I mean I have no doubt that uh, you could get this car to roll without any trouble you know <laughs> it's the, uh, the kind of SUVs don't tend to be particularly difficult to make roll if you really want them to but uh, yeah it isn't going to be a uh, be grip rolling which is nice. Uh, it's, it's nice to have all four wheels on the ground when you are trying to run around an autocross course. Now we are coming a oh, little bit of a, uh, a wheel spin down there. Now we've got this final wiggle to do through here. Uh, it's going to be a run towards the line. It's not going to be massively fast though. 213.0 from the Range Rover is a little... I say a little disappointing, it feels faster. It does feel like a lot faster around here. It's a <laughs> slight mystery uh, on this on this vehicle. I've driven certainly some of the cars that, that I've driven that have gone considerably, you know, we're talking four or five seconds uh, quicker around here, haven't felt as fast as this Range Rover does. It, it, it's peculiar. I'm I'm not quite I'm not sure if it's just the almost the surprise that this thing gets turned around the gates as well as it does that make it feel very very quick. I'm not sure if that's what it is. Um because yeah, it feels fantastically fast. It feels really Im incredible. It, it's almost sports car esque and for a giant Range Rover that is saying something. It really does feel almost sports car esque racing this thing, but it isn't quick. It isn't particularly quick at all around here. No, it's not the slowest vehicle that uh, that we have had. Uh, the time, we'll put it into 42nd. It goes quicker than a Rolls-Royce Wraith, quicker than the Fiat 8V, the Lotus Carlton, and it beats the silly vehicles, kind of the Vandura, the Bowler, the Cadillac Limo, and so on. But it's half a second down on the Mercedes, uh, the classic Mercedes Grand Prix car. It's a second down on the Jaguar XJS, you know, the Wallowy Boat. And 
That felt a lot worse to drive than, than this. This does not feel like a wallowy boat, and if anything should, it should be a giant Range Rover doing autocross. Um, just something, yeah, not quite, uh, not quite there. I don't know whether it can't quite carry the same corner speed, and while it does feel like it's going very fast through the corners, perhaps it actually isn't. I think there may be an element that uh, the weight does hinder some of the acceleration. Uh, certainly, when you've got four thousand pounds of Land Rover, it is going to hinder the acceleration some amount, despite all the power and torque. Uh, so maybe a combination of the two of them because it doesn't, yeah, it really doesn't feel that bad. It's a bit of a mystery. Much like the uh, the Jeep's incredible time uh, was uh, pretty sure done by magic, this one is uh, got uh, got an equally equal mystery. I am really very, very impressed with the with how well this Range Rover drives. It, it's almost a sports car. Uh, and that is, yeah, a strange thing to say. But it feels great around the circuit. Just a shame it's not particularly fast but uh, there we go that is it for this uh, video guys thank you very much for watching and until next time uh, goodbye